it's Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls and April was such a busy month. Not only because we reviewed five books that were on the most anticipated reads of first half of 2017 video, but also because y'all celebrated with me that BFCG turned four. That is so exciting and incredible and I can't thank you all enough from the bottom of my heart for supporting BFCG and all our social medias, especially our YouTube channel. So thank you so very much. And now let's get started with what we reviewed in April. Like always, I reviewed a Mandy book, and this is Mandy book number 25, Mandy and Her Missing Kin by Lois Gladys Leopard. Again, I still love these covers because they're like so nostalgic, it's not funny, but this one is cute. It's got a lot of Joe and Mandy, and let's be honest, Joe just brings out true Mandy in my opinion anyway, and I just love seeing them together, and there were some points where I'm like, oh, and then some other parts I'm like, oh. I gave this one four stars for a nostalgic and all the Joe and Mandy feels. So the first book today that I'm mentioning that was on my most anticipated reads list for the first half of 2017 was The Paper Boat by Trisha White Pribble and Jerry B. Jenkins. This is the third and final book in the 13 series. This was a really interesting concept. I honestly enjoyed the whole series. This one did feel a little rushed to me, but I have that opinion with a lot of trilogies. But it was really cute and good, and I really loved seeing how it all finished up and wrapped up. It was really good, and I can see a lot of people enjoying this series. Make sure you have all the books on hand, though, because cliffhangers... I gave the paper boat three and a half stars because it did fall a little flat for me, but I still really enjoyed this series. I also reviewed Last Summer at Eden by Christina Herkenreiter. I think I contacted the author, and I think that's how you say it. Hopefully. I hope I got that right. Anyway, it's a really cute summer read. It has the main girl Poppies trying to save the summer camp where she works at now. She's 19, so it's a YA. Last summer at Eden got three and a half stars for me. I wasn't always a fan of the romance, but it was still a really cute summer read. It kind of though reminded me of a Melody Carlson, one of her newer books. Were y'all expecting a video to go by without Janice Thompson being mentioned? Like, I'm just asking. I also reviewed A Class of Her Own by Janice Thompson. This one got four stars from me. Not a favorite, but I still really enjoyed it. Okay, I don't think I've talked about this series on here. I know I have talked about it on my bookstagram and my blog, of course, but not on here. This is book three of the Secrets of the Blue Hill Library series. It's from Guidepost. It's one of their lines, and it's a really cute, it's Mysteries at a Library. C can you get any better than that? And it's not like murder mysteries. It's just good old-fashioned mysteries, but it's set contemporary time. And this is book three I reviewed this month. This is Unlocking the Truth. I didn't think I would enjoy this one as much as the previous two for some silly reason, but I really enjoyed this one as well, and I really can't wait to get my hands on the rest of the series. Can y'all know something else? <laughs> I was so excited for this one, and I'm still so excited for this one. And then this one next to the first two books in the series, like their spines and the covers. And <gasps> Hang on a second, I'll show you. Are you ready for this beautifulness? <laughs> Y'all, I'm still swooning over these. I love these cover designs. Look at this. <sighs> and like it all just goes so good together. So good. And look at the spines. And <gasps> Oh, I honestly, I'm sorry I'm swooning over these so much, but at the same time, I'm not. Because look. Anyway, on Pursued, I gave this one four stars. I recently found out before I got this that there's going to be a fourth book in the series. I'll come back to that. But with Pursued, Nikki Boyd is back, y'all. And she's still kind of what I want to be. A vendetta, Missing, and now Pursued. And the fourth book, which is called Vanished Point or Vanishing Point is coming out here in November. I'm so excited for it. I'm kind of freaked out about it because of the plot line. It's, it's about her sister who was abducted about 10 years prior to where these books, and that is why Nikki Boyd 
joined the TBI and it was just oh I'm 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 really nervous for that book but I'm really so excited that I'm gonna be naive Nancy and hope everything ends well. I want a happy ending y'all. Another suspense book I read was Moving Target by Lynette Easton. This one I was expecting to be kind of creepier and it was and I read the first two books in the series this one though was really more suspenseful and creepy just like I was expecting this was another one mentioned on my first half of 2017's video I anticipated reads you know that one and this one was really good there was some parts I didn't like but it was very suspenseful and still ha it had that creepy undertone because you do see the the wackadoodle killer's his point of view. And book four is coming out later this year and I'm really excited to read it. I will be kind of sad though to say goodbye to these awesome tough girls because they've been so cool to read about. But this one was really good and I did enjoy it. There were some parts I didn't like so I did have to duck. A little bit for it so I gave it three stars. The Illusionist Apprentice by Christy Cambr Cambron? Cambron. Not sure how you say that too. I can't even get the title right let's be honest here people. But this was my first book by this author. I've heard a lot about her and I have another book of hers on my TBR shelf which y'all might have saw in last week's video and I just haven't gotten to it but this one was really interesting the cover is oh so pretty this one was really interesting though because the main character was an apprentice but also an illusionist and it was really interesting where they were kind of against the whole magic it wasn't magic you know kind of thing so it was a really interesting plot there were some parts I wasn't a fan of but for anyone who's read books set in the 1920s even Christian fiction books set in the 1920s they can still sometimes be iffy and I have to say this was the cleanest one I've read in the roaring 20s and I really appreciated that there wasn't a whole lot amount of faith content till the end but what was there I really enjoyed so I gave this one three stars I also reviewed To the Farthest Shores by Elizabeth Camden. This is an author who's very talented for pulling these storylines and weaving them together in a way that's fascinating for the reader. However, there's normally some content that I'm not normally a fan of. This one was no different. This one is definitely my least favorite by her and that's because they dealt with a lot of prejudice against a little Asian girl and I just... Mm, Nope, 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 nope. I'm, uh, no, 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 thank you. Lindsay's sensitive to that, thanks, no. So yeah, this one, this one was disappointing and it got two stars for me. I also reviewed a Regency Love Inspired Historical and that was the temporary betrothal. No, that's not right either. I have filmed this so many times, y'all, and I can't get that word. I know this word engagement people it's just an engagement kind of you know Hi, Lily George so this one was a really cute read I enjoyed it more than I was expecting to and overall it was just a cute sweet read that I gave three stars and then I got to review early the beloved hope chest by Amy Clipston and you guys all the feels this one was I mean it already was sad because it's the last book in the series and I've really been enjoying the Amish Heirloom series by Amy Clipston. But this one. So like now I need to redo the emoji challenge I did and this one would work for the sobbing. No, I didn't cry. I didn't sob but I did tear up because this one was... <gasps> so sad. It had some parts that just... I just wanted to hug everyone. Like, let's be honest, I just want to hug everyone most of the time in the books I'm reading. You going through a problem? Let me hug you. It's like, that's just who I am. So I just wanted to hug them all. And it was a, it was a really cute, sweet read. I'm so looking forward to seeing what this author has next. This book is coming out on May 9th, so it's actually coming out pretty soon. So you might look into it, but definitely read this series in order. At least in my opinion. I think you'll enjoy it the most. Because there's kind of a, the mystery is getting... Sprinkled along in book two, one and two and three and then book four you get the answers. So definitely I say I say read them in order. And then the last book I have to share with y'all today is The Lucky Few by Heather Avis. I believe is how you say it. And this is 
a really sweet and inspiring read. For those who don't know, adoption is very close to my heart, so I love reading adoption stories. And this one I gave four stars. It was such a sweet book by a sweet family, and I loved seeing the pictures of their family as it was growing in here. So that's what I read and reviewed in April on my blog books for Christian girls. And this month felt like it went pretty by, but that's because of all the giveaways and the birthday celebrations we had we were celebrating it was so exciting so thank you all so much to everyone who participated and who has been watching these videos if you have any questions or anything you can always leave them in the comments below i'm lindsay from the blog books for christian girls blogspot.com well i have a new review every monday wednesday friday i have a new video on this channel every thursday and then i'm on instagram every other day bye y'all <laughs>